I think I love what I do. So when I love what you, when anybody loves what they do and they put in their best, doesn't matter who gets the credit, who gets the, what the results are, something happens in that alchemy of, of you know, the alchemy between knowledge, expertise, um, a, a wanting to make a difference and standing in where I stand. I think that I think is actually the secret of Ahimsa. According to research, every human being has a space of caring beyond self. There are studies after studies on this. Like when the Framingham studies were done in the 70s about why is it some children are managed to, to uh, make it in spite of war and their, uh, in their village and others don't. It's this ability to expand beyond self. So compassion is a wounded heart of love for everybody, not just my family, my people, my biradri, my whatever. That self-worth is a very important aspect of ahimsa. Self-worth is self-awareness. I don't need to kill. I don't need to dominate anybody. In fact, self-worth and self-awareness, according to him, is the single biggest predictor of effective leadership. Whenever we are in crisis, we find somebody to dump it on. If we grow up, we don't do that. Why don't we understand freedom? So right now, worldwide, total confusion on ahimsa. Ahimsa is freedom based on liberty, no bias, the freedom you stand for. Mukti, mukti from my biases so that I don't have to kill to feel better. So freedom is mukti. Why are people calling wearing a mask lack of freedom? It's not lack of freedom, it's a preference. So language, when we make killing freedom, owning a gun freedom, we've missed the point. We've missed pursuit of happiness. We've missed liberty. We've missed solidarity. Because people always think that ideological stances create change. Ideological stances may be a support structure. It's never created change. I begin from the place of cultural transformation, not this big system out there. And I ask them, what you want to make happen has happened. What really do you deeply care about? What do you stand for? There are 10 ways of doing it. And people will come and I call it universal values. What you're willing to stand for, for everybody, not just your children, not just your family, not just your biradri or anyone. That ability to connect with who I am is an extremely peaceful space. And it's that peace that they taste for a moment. It's a blissful space. So we do one thing more, which is vital for this, for Himsa not to be present. We work on the identities that we have been socialized and educated with. In World War I, when veterans re returned to the US, they call it shell shock. Easy to understand, easy to deal with. By the time it was World War II, they called it battle fatigue. So then it's the fault is theirs, they are tired. By the time it was the Korean War, they started calling it something like um, uh, some other sanitized word, uh, which was something like inability to cope or you know some, some defect in the veteran. That's why you, know, you keep bombing, you're not supposed to suffer. And by the time it was the Vietnam War, we call it PTSD, which nobody understands what it is, post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder. And, and for a common, common person who wants to contribute to and make ahimsa a reality, you actually don't get it. So, so basically we use the inner capacity of humans that exist worldwide. We distinguish that from our social profile, which we would like to embrace, but not embrace as a divisive force, embrace it as a unifying force. Am I willing to go beyond intellectualization and be in action? And do it in simple ways, educating children, 
We've had people work during COVID times, how I serve others, how I interrupt social media of hatred. This they can do. One of the actions they can do is they can promote ahimsa in a genuine way, not through rhetoric on social media. They're all on social media. So am I willing to be in action? What I write, what I say. Number three, am I willing to actually work for some result? Because at the end of it, Rajni, it is not a philosophy of change. It's not a theory of change. It's the theory and practice of change. And it's subject agnostic. That means you can apply it to anything. So am I willing to commit to a result knowing that the word failure does not exist in this work? Sometimes we don't succeed. It's like a river. I got to be like a river. When a river meets a boulder, it doesn't say, oh no, boulder, I will stop flowing. It finds a pathway. So like that, I need the destination is the ocean or the river. 